I, I should just introduce Neil. I mean, he will introduce himself, but the reason that I know Neil was because through social media, I saw quite a lot of adverts for this new gym called Stalk. Longevity. <laughs> and it kind of piqued my interest. Good, that. Um, yeah. And so I thought I would, I would go along and just uh, see what it was all about. Um, and I was impressed by, by, by Neil himself because pretty much when it came to exercise, strength training, um, diet and nutrition are also part of um, uh, their practice. But the key thing for me, which is reason I go three times a week now. Um, it doesn't look amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so I'd, I've lost about, you know, my weight was stable for quite a while, but, uh, but I, I've lost uh, almost a stone since I've been going to the gym without trying. Uh, and he will tell you about the way that his gym works. But for me, the great thing is that all of the machines in the, the gym, unless there's a problem with the internet, they are all synchronized. So you don't have to wait for a piece of equipment. You come in, you have your personalized exercises, which on each machine which will probably last uh, two or three minutes. So you can do two circuits in half an hour. Uh, and the results are amazing. I, I, on my phone, I will show you my longevity app and, and I will show you, I'll prove to you that my strength age has so gone has gone five years lower than your chronological age. Well, it is. <laughs> my strength age is 40. I'm as strong yeah. as a 40 year old man. Yeah. So I was you. When compared to 15 million other people in the world. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Um, thanks for having me today. Um, I'm here to obviously talk to you about our. The longevity studio that we've recently opened uh, up in Mount Keynes. Just a little bit of background about myself. Um, I've basically worked in the health and fitness industry for 35 years, finished my sports science degree back in 1989. Since then, been a cleaner, a personal trainer, managing director, chief exec. And between us, I think I preferred the cleaner and personal trainer <laughs> bit than the MD and the, uh, and the chief exec. But look, re recently we've opened a, um, re recently we're going to look around the fitness industry really. And our view, and this is a generalization, is that you know 90% of the fitness industry in the UK, certainly today, focuses on people that are aged 18 to 35. Well, what if you're slightly north of that 35 year, year age number? So on that basis, we wanted to open a very different um, sort of physical activity proposition. So we've opened our very first longevity studio, we're still we're coming out the end of proof of concept. Uh, if we get to the point where we're happy with everything and it works, we're then going to try and scale this business um, throughout the UK uh, and, and throughout Europe. So we kind of refer to ourselves as a proactive, personalised healthcare company. We try and avoid the word gym, fitness and exercise at all costs because it basically turns as many people off as it, as it does on. Um, and, you know, we're on a mission really to provide people with the tools to live a long, strong, uh, active and healthy life. Um, our vision is to improve the functional fitness of over a million people, uh, and we want to improve their health span, their quality of life, uh, by literally adding uh, life to their years, which is what we're about. Uh, we measure um, all of this through uh, evidence-based bioweight assessments and a range of other scientifically validated tests. Now, this concept of evidence is really important to us, I think if the fitness industry is guilty of anything, it's about making assumptions about the, what, how fit people are or you know, how they're feeling internally. So everything we try and do is evidence-based. Um, you just get a start point. It doesn't matter if it's good, bad, or indifferent. But you know, four, 12, six months later, we can reassess um, an individual person and we can pro provide some evidence-based feedback as to how they're progressing and how they're getting on. So there is... Tons and tons and tons, as you guys all know, uh, of science and tech that's kind of out there in the longevity space uh, at the moment. Uh, and in fact, the more I've got into this, and I'm pretty new to this, and I do not claim to be a clinician or a longevity expert or anything like that, but the subject matter is fascinating, yeah? Uh, there's loads of money uh, going into it. What we're trying to do is bring some of that science and tech to market and make people aware of some of the things that are available to them which up until this point, they, they may be unaware of. And the whole outcome is to try to increase the health span uh, and the quality of life 
uh, and reduce and help reduce people's bio, bio ages. We are advocates, and again, this is new to me, but we're, we're definitely advocates of uh, medicine 2.0. We're advocates of prevention, not cure. Although at the moment we do spend a lot of time in the cure zone as opposed to the prevention zone. Uh, we're all about improving functional fitness, improving quality of life. Uh, and as Fraser said earlier, mentioned a couple of times in this active aging space. Um, you know, and I've got a couple of books up there. I think the work that people like Peter Atia and, Pete and David Sinclair are doing, not only is it fascinating and thought provoking, but it's really going to change the way that we age over the next sort of 10, uh, 20 years. And we're trying to bring some of that thinking uh, and some of that science in the simplest way possible to our customers that we've currently got uh, up in Milton Keynes. So why now? Well, one in two of the population is going to be over the age of 50 in, in 2030 in the UK. Um, and our view is that, you know, fundamentally normal ageing isn't normal. Some of you have probably seen the, the Netflix series, which I love, the uh, Live to 100, uh, the Blue Zones, yeah? And in it, the presenter, Dan, I forget his surname, but he basically talks about how we've engineered physical activity out of our lives, yeah? We wake up in the morning, we go down the stairs, we put the kettle on. We come back up the stairs, we sit in bed, we watch breakfast TV, drinking our cup of tea. We walk five yards, five yards, five paces, you know, into the shower, which is now in our bedroom. We get washed, we get dressed, we walk down the stairs, we get in our cars, we drive to work. When we get to work, we sit at our desk in front of a PC. If I do, this is personal, if I do a normal day's work, I walk about 2,000 steps a day. I have to physically do something different in order to get to the point where the, act, the physical activity that I'm doing has any benef benefit whatsoever to my health, yeah? We've, you know, 21st living, we've engineered physical activity out of our lives and we need to get it back in. So our solution then, we've got a small studio in, in MK, 1,200 square foot. Um, we've got a science-based solution which covers the key components of health-related fitness. So we look at all of our customers, we look at levels of muscular strength, mobility, flexibility, um, cardiovascular fitness and metabolic health. Metabolic health being a really important indicator to overall um, physical fitness and physical health. We have evidence-based uh, biological age assessments. We do results-orientated fitness programs, loads of educational content and access to specialized quality uh, coaches. And it isn't actually that complicated. You know, as Fraser said earlier in his, in, in his presentation, it is about making sure you've got the right nutrition and diet. It is about making sure you've got physical activity in your life. It is about sleep. It is about stress. It is about family connections and social. It may not be that difficult in theory, but it doesn't mean it's that easy to deliver in practice, yeah? So at the core of our brand, as I mentioned, we've got a muscular strength um, training circuit, resistance training circuit. And for us, strength training is the elixir of life. You know, the benefits of strength aren't just about being strong, although frequently that is the reason why people become frail and infirm in their late 70s and 80s, my parents sadly being an example of that. But there are so many other physiological benefits to strength training um, that we need to tell people about, yeah? Because if you don't know, you don't know. So strength training, you know, just a couple of them. If you are, if you are a regular strength trainer two to three times a week, there's more going on than just building muscle size. You know, you're oxidizing fatty acids, lowering traditional triglycerides, helping to reduce cholesterol. Your, your body produces endorphins when you exercise. That improves mood and mental health, but it helps combat anxiety and depression, and so on and so on and so on. So many benefits to regular physical activity and to strength training. So that's at the core of our brand. But then around it, I mentioned earlier, we're trying to commercialize some of the science and tech of longevity. So around that, we build a customer journey. So if our customers want to, we do DNA and epigenetics testing, and then we, we have a whole different lifestyle conversation with our customers when we get those results back. We do things with omega-3s and 6s and cellular health. We're about to begin doing stuff with um, gut health and cognitive fitness, so brain health as well. So bringing all of those things together, we're beginning to build up a consumer proposition for people that might be over the age of 40 and who are just as interested in what's going on on the inside of their bodies as opposed to what they might look like 
you know, just from the outside. So our market, our youngest member is 38 and our oldest is 87. We do get some people who join our studio that are already longevity advocates, um, but that's not a widely, widely known message yet. Yeah, but a lot of people who join um, have been inactive for many years. A lot of people join, you know, simply don't like going to gyms. Uh, and a lot of people who join have got a range of different medical conditions as well. And as Fraser mentioned in his presentation, we're already starting to see people move from move away from being pre-diabetic, pre beginning to come off hypertension uh, medication because the benefits of physical activity are making a difference in their lives. Tech in process, well, we're in the process of developing an app which is going to deliver everything that I've just said uh, to, to people that don't, you know, aren't in a position where they can use our studio. It will be based on muscular strength, but you can do strength training you know, in your bedroom or your lounge or your kitchen at home. You can use body weight uh, and all of the, um, the, the, the sort of features of the proposition that I've just mentioned will be available via the app. And on average, uh, people who follow our programs for 12 weeks reduce their overall bio age by seven years. So technically speaking, that's an extra seven functional years that they've just added back uh, into their life. Because um, at the end of the day, it's not the years in your life that count, it's definitely the life in your years. And that's us, thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, uh, Neil, that's interesting. Has anybody got any, any comments or questions to Neil before we uh, move on to the next uh, presenter? Uh, Thank you very much, that's great. Um, in terms of your outreach and marketing and people finding you versus you finding them, what has your strategy been? Well, we messed it up completely when we first went to market because everything that we were doing was all about um, longevity, slowing down, reversing aging, and um, compare your bio age against your chronological age. No one had a clue what we were talking about, to be quite <laughs> honest. Um, so we flipped all the marketing messages uh, January time. Now they're much more specific, largely around, um, well, we've got one marketing stream, which is all about a range of different health conditions and how we can help. There's another marketing stream just about, do, do you want to be, do you want to still be your best when you're in your 80s? Um, and then we've got other marketing streams all around um, people that don't like gyms, people that haven't got time to go to the gym, and that, that sort of, those sort of messages. Yeah. yeah. Do you, um, um, I'm Anthony, by the way. Nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah. Um, um, do you do anything with uh, virtual work working out? Um, so we don't at the moment, but as I mentioned, we've got an app in development at the, at the moment, mm -hmm. and um, virtual workouts will definitely be part of that okay yeah, yeah i'd love to chat with you about that um okay. uh, i know during covid that it was uh, really big um joe wicks and things like yeah that. yeah yeah so mm -hmm. yeah i think there's really uh, yeah yeah very yeah. Good. yeah yeah okay well we're still uh playing with the technology to load andrew's presentation um so just keep talking in, in terms of your attendees do you do you find that once they've joined, they stay, or is there a reason for a little attrition? Well, so if you if you compare the um, uh, the average length of stay of one of our customers, it's significantly higher than the average length of stay of the normal fitness industry. Yeah. And the reason for that, I think, will be twofold. Number one, we're dealing with a slightly slightly older clientele, so they're a bit more settled and they're not transient and all that sort of thing. But also, they're there for a reason, and they kind of know that you know our, our mantra is you know if you're 65 now and strength training in our studio you need to be 85 in 25 20 years time and still strength training in our studio because you should never stop i mean i think as a medic um right. uh, an oncologist and i yeah. deal with cancers yeah one of the the tantalizing things that we're dealing with is there are some people that who have difficulty you know, making those changes yeah. um, and are often in the predicament because they've obviously had habits form and environmental circumstances that make it very difficult to change. Yeah. And obviously it's making those sort of uh, inequalities, I suppose, in terms of their mindset um, a little bit more uh, plateaued, you know. Yeah, I guess the people that we see have come to us in the first instance, they've made that, effort, that initial effort to actually leave their, the comfort of their own house and come to the studio.
but he, you, I mean, you're welcome to come and have a look at any stage. But the um, it's, it's, we only allow eight people in the studio at any one time. It's very personable. There's always a qualified member of staff there. The main reason that people come to begin with is normally some sort of physically related outcome. After a few weeks, it's all about social. It's all about inclusiveness. It's all about being part of the community. Uh, and it's all about coming to meet their friends. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um...